Hi guys, my name is Annabelle from Horizon Cosplay and every year I make a series in December called 12 Days of Cosplay Christmas. Now this year I'm actually being really good because we had some problems last year with the fact that I was working loads and just didn't have time to edit the videos or finish my Christmas project for last year so that was an embarrassing thing. However, this year I have taken it upon myself to try and pre-film one video every single month so that by the time we get to December all I have to do is edit, I don't have to worry about crafting and it just hopefully all goes well. <laughs> so, though you're going to have to wait to see the video for it, I have made this dress for cosplay Christmas and I made it out of an old vintage dressmaking kit and I love it and then when I put it on I got this weird flash of inspiration you know it just kind of flashed in front of my eyes I just couldn't quite see it but I knew that it was there and then I realized this fabric and the fabric I'm wearing are nearly exactly the same it's just that this one is orange and you know what else is orange? Nemo! Okay, so something that you guys probably don't know about me and Ben is that we actually have like this small, rather large obsession with fish. And what is my favorite fish, do you ask? Well, it is clownfish. Why? Because there are so many kinds of them and they have the most unique and awesome markings. Now, I have decided that I wish to make a clownfish Nemo dress out of orange fabric based on this pattern, which luckily I think I took a copy of before I sewed it all together. Otherwise we're gonna have to wing it a little bit, but you know, we'll make it work, it'll be fine. But but before we get to cutting out the fabric and making the dress, I think we need to go somewhere for a little bit of inspiration. Because it's been a while since my last trip to the aquarium and, well, there's nothing like a couple of good fishes. However, I don't really want to pay for an aquarium. Luckily though, there is somewhere local that I can go to observe and note down some artistic features of clownfish. Let's go. So I was off to see the fishes and this is where it gets interesting for me because do you guys even realize how many different kinds of clownfish there are? Well, a lot is the answer and my favorite two are Snowflake and Picasso clownfish, which unfortunately is not what Nemo is, but they're still really, really cool. Also as a bit of extra bonus footage, this was the clownfish display at the last aquarium me and Ben went to, which was utterly awesome. I'm gonna come and join you in the anemone pod. This is amazing. Look how many clownfish there are. I love the fact that because you're inside, you can see what they're all doing as well. They look Dory's in here with everyone. No, there's a Dory, just the one. <laughs> Okay, so we are back from seeing the fishes and I am feeling suitably inspired. I also have a rather expensive parking ticket because I parked somewhere where apparently you were supposed to have a permit but I didn't see those giant signs that they apparently put around the place. Oops. However, now I think it's time to finish off my last two projects which is the paper dress and also my waistcoat which looks really plain so... Here's a peek at the inside, and then we can finally cut out the fabric for Nemo. Of course, I began by ironing out the fabric. This is where I realized that the fabric I was working with was a hell of a lot thicker than the stuff that was used on the original dress. This won't really change the plans that I have here at all, but it is something to take note of because it's not gonna be the summer dress for very hot weather that I originally thought that I was making. When it came to cutting out the pieces, I started with the waistband, cutting along the edge of the curtain where it was already folded. I then pinned and cut the top, making sure to line up the slight stripes because who wouldn't want to pattern match something that easy next up was the skirt for this i literally just cut along half of the curtain as i wanted as much length as possible to make the pleats with and because one curtain wasn't quite enough for my i need a puffy skirt desires we then cut a second one and then trimmed off the folded over seams for both pieces before pinning them together and that gave us lots and lots and lots of lovely fabric to work with Okay, so that's all of the orange stuff cut out and done, which is fantastic. And the next thing is to add the white lines that clownfish are so well known for. So clownfish, they normally have two stripes on their body. I think it kind of varies. Obviously like the Picasso and the Snowflake one, it's kind of patchy. And then you've got like the South African ones, which just have a big bit. And then you've got those weird little tomato ones, which just have one little white bit. But we're gonna go for classic Nemo, which means we need two stripes of fabric. So my plan is to put one white stripe across the skirt and one across the top. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do the stripes yet. I think we're gonna lay out the fabric, kind of draw out the stripes and then essentially just kind of wing it with cutting it out in a cute wobbly line. But first we need to iron this because, well, this is an old white bed sheet I have. And hell, the rest of the dress is made out of curtains, so this may as well get made out of bedding. It's really nice and soft as well. I get a feeling this was a good one I wasn't supposed to cut up. <laughs> Oops, Ben, this is what happens when you go on holiday. The white fabric ended up being a bit thinner than I was originally anticipating. I didn't really have a solution for this just yet, but we started ironing it anyway. The next day, I laid out the white fabric. In order to get an applique piece that was the entire length for the skirt, we had to cut it out from a diagonal. 
However, once I got it drawn out and trimmed, it didn't actually look that bad. And also, yes, there are marks in the fabric. Seems the cats have stood on it with muddy paws at some point. Oops, we'll just try and avoid those if we can. We then got two layers of white and drew out where I wanted the appliques to begin and end for the shirt. These were then pinned and cut to finish off all the white that we needed for this project. And also, all my white fabric just in general. So I had a think about how I'm going to do this because honestly, it's been a few days and I just haven't been being that motivated. I was so enthusiastic about this project when I was designing it and figuring out what I wanted to do. It became cut out and now it's just another thing on my to-do list, which is oh, annoying. I'm going to like it once it's done, but right now I'm just not feeling the process. <laughs> Which is fine, sometimes that happens with projects. So we're gonna start small, we're gonna start pinning out the white things onto the shirt. That is then gonna get stitched on. Do the same with the skirt, I think. So yeah, I don't know. I think this one might be a bit of a slow burner. Not really feeling it right now. So I got pinning. It took a little while and there was a little faffing with making sure everything lined up, but in the end it worked out and looked fantastic. Then we were onto the skirt. Somehow, even though I'd laid it out with the two sides, like, lining up the lines where it should begin and end it just didn't want to line up which was really really annoying but it still looks great even if it doesn't make a complete circle so i won't complain too much and it really does just look as good as i could possibly want so yeah i'm happy it's a small mistake but it's not one that i'm going to be particularly worrying about well guys it is the end of my work week which means the next few days i have off so i can focus on making nemo however before that we have whiskey coca-cola store-bought macaroni and cheese a recipe for a very good night if i do say so myself however i need your opinion on something now i have been trying to get hold of this fabric for like a year and i finally got it and i think i ordered more than i was actually thinking i thought i'd get about two yards and i think i've gotten about three or four so that's good but i don't actually know what to do with this fabric except that it's awesome and it needs something done with it so guys comments down below please give me some ideas because it needs using i need to use it by christmas because you know moving and all that do let me know also sherlock's currently sulking because he's locked in the house because somebody has to go to the vet tomorrow and you're not looking forward to it are you boop not to mention that tomorrow we also find out if the diet Sherlock has been put on is actually working for him because, uh, yeah, went to the vet a week or two ago and turns out that he weighs about 6.5 kg and his ideal weight is about 4.5. You a tubby little putty cat. Oh yeah, we love you anyway though, don't we? To start with, I got some scraps of the orange and the white and did a few experiments with zigzag width and length until I found something that I was happy with. Then I got out the shirt and began the applique process. Because the right zigzags were very close, this took a hell of a long time. However, it looked just so good that I couldn't make myself put them any wider so that I could go faster and after completing the shirt that afternoon the next morning I got going with the skirt. Now this really did try my patience because it was a long skirt and the zigzagging was very 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 slow. Sherlock that is white fabric you better not have muddy paws I am trying to stitch here and you are now laying on the thing that I am stitching. Boop. Thing is now I just feel like I can't move him because he's too darn cute. Oh. Wait, that claw better not be caught in my skirt. But we got there in the end and just look at how clownfish this thing looks. Right, well it has taken me just about all day, but all the appliques are finally done. Thank God, it is genuinely about eight o'clock at night. I started doing these at about 11 or 12. It was slow, there was a lot of procrastination on my part as well because honestly, I just, no. I want this outfit, I want it so badly that I am making it myself, but no, and never again. I am never again going to make a clownfish dress. However, we are done and now we need to start pinning it all together so that it's actually going to be an outfit. I actually think I might be able to get this done tonight. I feel like I always say that and it never happens. So we'll see, but wish me luck. So I got pinning the skirt and the shirt, marking out a place for the zip and then got tired and honestly, you just, just went to bed. Why not? I've just gotten out of bed. Did I not leave my lesson about leaving stuff on the floor last time? Apparently not. That's my skirt. I'm really hoping it's not marked because underneath those black lines is white fabric but at least it's inside out for sake once the decapitated bunny was removed i started sewing everything i had pinned we began with the top then moving on to the skirt basting the zipper line before starting to overlock everything and once that was done we began to iron out the zipper so if you guys can see the edge of this white applique just hasn't gone inside the seam which is really annoying because 
very clearly it has enough room to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pin the rest of the zip, which is currently sat under the basted seam, and I'm going to see if I can just unpick this one little bit and, you know, kind of shove it in there because I don't want to rebaste everything, but it's one of those things is either going to work or I'm just going to regret it and end up unpicking it anyway. So let's see which one it is. I did try, but in the end, it just had to be unpicked and restitched, taking way more energy than I had, and I totally blame the hot weather for that. However, once it was finally done, we pinned and top stitched on the zipper. I did have to remove a few stitches that had caught the actual zipper when I was removing the basting stitch, but a quick couple of hand stitches had those fixed up absolutely perfectly, so that absolutely got sorted, really. Next, I ironed the waistband, ready to attach the skirt. But before we did that, we began pinning all the raw hems on the skirt as I figured this would be easier while it was just one big loop. Though it is a big loop, maybe made it a bit too big if I'm honest, but sort of I've put the time and effort to applique it now, so we're gonna just roll with it and use everything that I made. I also did the shirt while I was at it, leaving the neckline as we're gonna do a whole nother thing there, but rolling over the shirt hem and sleeve ends. This then all got top stitched, and yes, I am top stitching it in black because I figured it would match the black lines next to the white appliques, so why not? You guys genuinely have no idea how hot it is right now. I am sweating. My pajamas are the thinnest clothing I own, thus the reason I'm wearing them, but we're pressing on. Now, shirt pretty much completely done, just the collar area to go, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a square piece of fabric that's going to fold to the outside and then get hand stitched down with some decorative stitching. It is going to be black. This is literally the only black fabric I've, I own. It is very thin, it is also a little bit stretchy, so what we're going to do just to reinforce it because I kind of want to give the neck a little bit of shape if possible just to help it keep that nice square. I've got this very loose interfacing. I actually think this came out of a wedding dress skirt that I chopped up for silk for like ages ago. So we're going to try using this. We're going to cut it out both of them, layer it up, put it on. With the skirt, the only thing we need to do is pleat it into the waistband. So I've measured out the waistband and, 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 and. I have just asked the Discord which of these three buttons I should be using for the waistband because I do want to give it a button up just to hold it a little bit more in place. We've got kind of like a plain shiny white one. Then we've got these two which are more just white plastic but they are quite nice patterns. So I've put that on the Discord for them to vote for. We'll see what they say and then we will come back to that. And if you guys also want to join the Discord so that you too can vote on my buttons, the link is in the description below, so please go ahead. We have a nice little community going and I value your guys' opinion because most of the time you pick way better than I ever would. Now I suppose we better get on and finish these. I thought I filmed patterning and cutting the collar facing, but it seems I forgot to hit that red button. However, once it was done, we then got pinning ready to attach it. This was then sewn on before being pinned in place around the folded edge. Next though is pleating the skirt. To do this, I started by attaching each end of the skirt, lining up the centre of the skirt with the centre of the waistband, and then began freehanding different pleats to see what I liked. In the end, I got somewhat perfect three double box pleats on each side, one single box pleat either side of the centre front, and a small gap in the centre front to help keep the line of the applique nice and clear, because most of the time people are going to be looking at me from the front, I should hope. So very happy I got stitching. All those pleats, all those beautiful pleats that I put in and I did so neatly and to be fair took me quite a long time. The bobbins run out, I haven't noticed and now over half of them have unraveled themselves so I suppose it's back to the ironing board then we'll give stitching it another go. It's nearly done. I did not film myself repinning this as I didn't want to show my frustration on camera, but then we got sewing again and this time it worked like a charm. With the skirt pleats down we moved onto the shirt, sewing close to both the inside and outside edge of the neck facing it got a little wrinkled. The fabric is quite stretchy after all, but overall I think it does look super nice, even if not all the lines are perfectly straight. You know what, it's a clownfish, none of the other lines are straight so we're absolutely fine. And the shirt is done! <laughs> So excited. Now, I was going to add these little pearls to the neckline, but honestly, it's got some really big patterns on, and I just think that these, shaky, 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 I just think that these are gonna be a little bit much, so I'm just gonna save them for another project. The only thing that means we have left to do is to sew the waistband of the skirt. So, essentially, let's have a look at this. Outside is it all attached and neat. Inside, because we've just sewn that side, just needs to go along and do a little stitch here, just to hold it all in place. And then we also need to attach the buttons, I have still got some votes coming in for the buttons, but so far it's a unanimous decision, so I will show you which one has been picked in a moment, but I love this skirt. It came out way puffier than I was expecting, but genuinely excellent, 10 out of 10. This I'm definitely going to wear all the time. This I'm probably going to wear all the time. 
Hopefully I'm also going to wear them a lot together because that is the look I was going for. However, for the moment it is hot, I am sweaty, I'm going out to dinner in like two hours, so I think I'm going to have a shower and then we'll see about getting that done tonight. So I sat down and hand stitched all around the inside of the skirt. I did this in black thread even if it was visible in some places because black thread is what's been used everywhere else in this outfit so why change now? Once that was done I then got started on the buttonholes and the buttons. It was the large white one that unanimously won on the discord by the way and can I just say that these have to be the neatest buttonholes I have done yet. I am so so happy with them but not nearly as happy as I was when I finally put on this outfit. And guys, do remember, if you like this dress, it is available on my Ko-Fi shop, so please do check it out. Link is in the description down below. It is up there for free, but I would appreciate a donation if you are able to give one because it really does help support the channel and make projects like this possible when I have to actually buy sewing supplies rather than just pulling from all the fabric I seem to have accumulated. How did that even happen? <sighs> okay. I think one way of making you guys understand how successful this project has been is by telling you that the only reason, the only reason that I was making this is because I found some random orange fabric in my stash and I went, I need to assign every piece of fabric in my house a project because move coming up, don't want to take it as much with me, so I'm just trying to use up as much as I can. And the white was scrapped from another project, I think my Thumbelina petticoat, which was scrapped from something else. The orange is just an old pair of curtains I picked up for free off the Facebook marketplace and somehow, somehow, this has been one of my favourite projects to ever make. Not because it's perfect, because it's definitely not. A lot of the appliques don't line up, that's just one of those things. But when you just look at them front on, they are amazing, they came out so perfect. I could honestly not wish for better, it's awesome. The collar also came out a little bit wonky and it's not overly noticeable but it also does bother me slightly, so that's maybe something I'd fix in the future. Overall though, if I had to do something different next time, I wouldn't. Maybe just make sure the plique is aligned, but I would make it the exact same. And honestly, I'm never going to remake this because as far as I'm concerned it is perfect, even if there are a lot of imperfections. And then you have the fact that this shirt and skirt just aren't as light as I was anticipating them. Absolutely fine, just means it's not height of summer wear, it's more like autumn spring wear, which again, no problem, I don't have a lot of those dresses. But also, like, if I go to Disneyland, this is what I'm wearing. I made a Disney bound that I am going to be so happy to wear to the theme parks as and when I suppose I eventually go, because I'm sure it'll happen at some point, it's just not at the moment. So yes, overall, this project gets 10 out of 10. I'm super happy, I'm super pleased, couldn't have asked it to go better, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Please remember to let me know what you think in the comments down below, I always appreciate it. And tell me, should I make my dad an outfit to go with this dress so that we can dress up as Nemo and his father, because that would be pretty damn fun? Or should I just make myself a dory dress? Not that I actually have any blue fabric, but hey, it's an idea. Also, the swoosh factor of this skirt is 10 out of 10. I just could not stop spinning while taking these photos and videos because, well, it was just awesome. And thank you so much for going along, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to see more of my cosplay, sewing, and vintage sewing machine content. I can't wait to share more with you guys. I have been doing a lot of projects recently and somehow, touch wood, they've all been coming out really quite well. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. And until then, have a beautiful day. Bye.